Hi, this is Nick Peterson for CB Motion Graphics, and in this podcast, we're going to create the intro that you just saw. It's very easy to do, requires very little complex stuff. So first thing if you need to do is you need to open up After Effects, and after that, press Command N to create a new comp, and we'll call this Working Area. And I prefer to work in uh, HD 720 at 29.97 frames per second. Uh, you can leave you can leave the duration whatever it happens to be. It's going to need about five or six seconds. I'm just going to leave uh, 15 frames up here. We can always shorten it if we need to. So press OK. And here is our new comp. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. OK, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a black solid. So Command Y. And we'll call this Lens Flare Holder. Because the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a lens flare on this. So make sure that that's selected, and then go to Effect, Generate, Lens Flare. And what we need to do with this is we need to set it up so that it ramps up and down within one second. I prefer the 105 millimeter prime look. You can choose whatever you want. And then we're going to animate the flare brightness. So make sure that the CTI is set to zero, and then click on the stopwatch for flare brightness and set this down to zero. Then open it up down here in the timeline. Go to 15 frames. Set it to 85. We don't want to go all the way up. And then click over to one second and set it at 100%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Animate, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease Out. We'll click on that keyframe, Animation Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease In, click on the middle one, Animation Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease, and that's going to create a nice gentle ramp up and down. So if you set your CTI at 115, press N to limit the work area, press 0 on the number pad to do a ramp preview. And it would help if we went over here and we set this back down to zero, wouldn't it? So there we go. Warts and all, you can see what I'm doing here. So again, set the RAM preview. And you can see it just flashes in briefly, one right after the other. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go down to Toggle, Switches, and Modes. Click on that. And we need to set the Transfer Mode to Screen. Now that we've got all that, we'll twirl everything up. And you're going to duplicate this eight times. So just press Command D, and again, you can hold down the Command key and press D, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, before we do any of this, what we're going to do is we are going to advance the CTI to 15. And you can see, whoa, that's really, really bright. We don't want it to be that bright. And we need to go um, instance by instance, and we need to change the flare center. So you click on the target, and we'll put this one right over here, and we'll wait for the little spinny wheel to finish what it's doing. There we go. And then just click on the next one, and do the same thing for each one, and try to keep it somewhat toward the center. You don't want to go too far afield. And you can just do this as your preference is. It doesn't have to stay in the same place. It doesn't even have to look exactly like mine. And there we go. We sort of have these flashing bulbs all appearing in the same place. And we can see there they are. They're pretty well distributed. Go forward. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to offset them in time. And that's actually very easy to do. We just click on the layer. And again, you can set this however you like. In fact, the more individualized it looks, the better. And now if you do a RAM preview, it looks like these paparazzi flash bulbs are going off. Okay, and that's what we're looking for right there. And that becomes the basis of what we're going to do. So you're going to click on the top layer. Press Shift, click on the bottom layer to select them all, 
press shift command C to pre-compose and we're going to call this flash bulbs and the only choice we have is move all attributes into the new composition press OK and again if you do another RAM preview you're gonna see the exact same thing and here's the next thing that we can do just to give it more continuity press uh, flash bulbs the new pre-comp we've made then press command D you can duplicate that and then click on the layer and change the endpoint and now we can make it last for an even longer time and you can do that as much as you like let's do it four times just again we'll call it season to taste you can do it however you like stretch out the work area zero for a ramp preview Now the next thing is you need to make sure that these are also all set to screen. So I just selected them all. Now I'm going to screen and now we'll really get a sense of how they're going to look. And there they all are. Just like they should be. Just like that. And there's one more thing that we can do to really sell this effect. And that is this. We're going to make them all 3D layers. So again, select them all, go down to toggle switches and modes, and then on any one of them, press the 3D uh, switch, and they all become three-dimensional layers. And what you can do is you can arrange them in 3D space, which we'll do going to click and select all of them, press the position, unselect them all, and then you can arrange them back. Keep in mind negative numbers mean that the layer is moving toward you, like so. Now what you're seeing is this uh, banding. It's especially noticeable right here. And that's the smallest one and the next smallest one. And what we're going to do is we're just going to scale those up. So select both of them by clicking one, pressing command, and then clicking the other. We're going to scale and press S to open up their scale properties and then scale them up appropriately. Not too much because the next thing that we're going to do so we're going to rotate them and you might actually want to scale them up just a little bit more and open up the scale properties of the other ones and scale them up because now what you're going to do is you're going to select them all and press the R key and open up the rotation value and we want to rotate them so that they they fold into an X pattern as we're looking at them and to do that we're going to use the Y rotation in order to uh, rotate them in that way so click away and then go to the first layer and you can see which one it is because it's highlighted and then use the Y rotate. Now the thing you need to be careful of is you need to make sure that this beige boundary here never crosses the viewing area. And You can see we're, we're pretty close right there. So we go to the next one and do the same thing with a Y rotation. But this time we're going to go in the opposite direction and just make sure that that never really crosses. The same with this one. Here. And finally, we're going to do the same right there. And so now that gives us a slightly different look if we do a RAM preview. moves them around ever so slightly. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a new camera. So shift option command C to add a new camera. Bring up the camera settings dialog box. We're just going to accept the defaults. And we're going to move the camera. Actually, we're just going to press the P key there. We're going to move the camera forward 
so that we never have to worry about this banding. Although we have a little bit over here, so we just need to adjust one of the layers, which is this one. So we're just going to reduce the rotation, say, to 7, and that takes care of it. And now we can move the camera forward, because we're never going to worry about the new comps being too small for it. See, if we moved it back, you can see that we have to worry about this banding. But if we accept the default position of the camera, which is negative 1244.4, and then move the camera forward, which means going from a negative to a positive value, we'll never have to worry about these being too small. So we're going to go back to zero. We're going to click on the stopwatch for the position value of the camera. And then we're going to keep it moving forward until all these lights have stopped, which occurs around four seconds or so. And then let's go in, and you can see how close you're getting by looking at the uh, beige outlines there. Let's call negative 1,000. That works. And now we get a motion effect. And there it is, complete with camera move. All right, that is done. That We are not going to change anything to it, but it does take a long time for it to render out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything, we're going to pre-compose it, and we'll call this light background. In order to save ourselves some time, we're going to go up to Composition, Pre-Render. That's going to open up the render queue. We're not going to change anything about what we're doing. It will uh, render this entire thing. We'll just hit the render button. It'll take about a minute or so for it to render out the same amount of time it did for a RAM preview. And thanks to the magic of video editing, this is actually going to go much, much faster. So we're going to go back into working area, delete the pre-comp, and substitute in working area. And now we have our movie. We don't have to worry about it rendering anymore because it's right there already done. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add our title. So you're going to bring up a text layer, shift option command T, and you're going to type in cherry blossom enter motion graphics or whatever you want to do for yourself. make sure that it's layered on top in the timeline. Just scrub through to make sure that it's looking good, which it is. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go up to File. Actually, before you do that, make sure that the CTI is set to zero. You'll go to File, Browse and Bridge. Then you'll come over here into the search field and you're going to type in Evaporate because that's the one we're going to be using. And evaporate is actually an out, as you can see in the preview window over here, but we're going to use that as our in. So you're going to select the text layer, twirl down the text until you see the evaporate animator, and you can see there's a little black dot there, which means we have some keyframes. So twirl down the range selector, and you can see Offset is the only thing that has been keyframed. So click on Offset to highlight both keyframes and come up to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Time Reverse Keyframes. And that will change a text out into a text in. And you can see they're starting to evaporate in over time. Twirl it up, do a RAM preview. And what I like to do is I like to delay the text in by about half a second or a second or so. So we're just going to increase that and increase the work area and do a new RAM preview so that we can see exactly what we're going to get. And the text is in and the lights fade out. And there it is.
And that is how you create a nice little paparazzi style intro for your name or your graphic or whatever it is that you choose to do. Hopefully this uh, inspires some creativity on your part and good luck.